Good morning. My name is Zachary Gearhart. I'm Director of Government Relations for Wichita State University. Welcome to the WSU Weekly Briefing. We hold these briefings in an effort to keep you, the public, better informed as to ongoings at Wichita State University. Following a university update, there will be time for questions. Earlier today, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, an advisor to the President Ivanka Trump, visited Wichita. They first visited the WSU Tech National Center for Aviation Training for a tour and roundtable. Dr. Sherry Utash, President of WSU Tech and Vice President of Workforce Development at Wichita State University, is a member of the American Workforce Policy Advisory Board, co-chaired by Ivanka Trump and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. After the roundtable, a group of Wichita-based aviation companies signed the Pledge to America's Workers the Pledge to America's Workers is a White House initiative that boasts pledges from over 360 companies who have so far committed to over 14 million new or enhanced career and job training opportunities for American workers. The Secretary and Advisor Trump visited Textron Aviation for a tour and meet and greet with Textron Aviation employees who have benefited from Textron's Pledge to America's Workers commitment to, of 22,240 opportunities. The Textron Aviation opportunities have been realized largely through the Aviation Pathway Partnership with WSU Tech. This program is a high school aviation curriculum where students have the opportunity to receive their high school diploma, a technical certificate in aviation production, or aviation maintenance upon graduation. Just on a personal note, I just left this event probably like two minutes ago, and it was really cool to see a round table made up of not just CEOs and executives, not just the Secretary of State and Special Advisor to the President Ivanka Trump, but there were students up there telling their personal stories about what it was like, the struggles in their life leading to this opportunity to receive a credential and what it meant for them upon graduation and their hopes for the future. I would encourage you to look at this. It was live streamed earlier this morning to find it on the internet. There are really amazing stories and just how awesome it was to see those four students who were up there talking in front of the Secretary of State and members from the White House sharing their experience. Wichita State is hosting 175 guests this week for the CMH 17 PMC coordination group meetings, wrapping up today at the Radigan Student Center. The group meetings held every eight months across the country give advanced materials, engineers, and experts the opportunity to contribute to various topics and sections of the CMH 17 handbook. The handbook is written in partnership with industry professionals. The group meets in Wichita every three years, typically at the National Center for Aviation Training. This is the first time the group has met on the campus at Wichita State. Attendees include representatives from most US and multiple international composite manufacturers and end users, including Gulfstream, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Airbus, Spirit Aerosystems, Textron Aviation, NASA, and the FAA. The Presidential Search Committee, chaired by Steve Clark, completed its work last week by submitting three to five candidates for consideration by the Kansas Board of Regents. The Board of Regents met Sunday and Monday to consider candidates. No date has been set, but the Regents plan to hold a meeting at WSU to confirm their selection and introduce the new president. The day, time, and place for that event will be announced by the Regents and communicated in advance to students, faculty, and staff, and the media. Wichita State students, faculty, staff, and administrators are encouraged to respond to the 2019 climate survey from the Wichita State University Office of Assessment. The survey is intended to provide information to campus leaders, appropriate offices, <clears throat> and initiatives related to experiences and perceptions of the campus climate. The survey will examine both satisfaction and comfort with the current climate with diversity and equity as its lens. The survey launched Tuesday via email to students, faculty, and staff, and remains open for three weeks. The WSU Foundation President's Club celebration takes place tonight. David Unruh will receive the Board of Trustees Award given to a person who has made significant contributions to the vital and rewarding partnership that exists between Wichita State University and the community. The recipient is selected from worthy honorees nominated by a committee from the WSU Board of Trustees and reviewed by the university presidents to select a, a candidate for final approval by the board. As a member of the Sedgwick County Commission for 16 years, 
Dave Underwood dedicated himself to improving the quality of life for all residents. Early in his tenure, he recognized the important role which Tau State University plays in helping to create a vibrant community. He consistently supported initiatives to grow and strengthen the university, with one of his most notable accomplishments being to champion the partnership between WSU and Wichita Area Technical School to create WSU Tech. The Wichita Business Journal recently compiled a best of 2010s list. It included Wichita State's men's basketball success, the innovation campus, and WSU Tech's rebranding and affiliation with Wichita State. The list of Wichita business culture and construction highlights also include Interest Bank Arena, Eisenhower National Airport, the popularity of the Wichita flag, and Carkill's downtown relocation among 18 items. The entire community is invited to a pep rally to celebrate the upcoming season for the Shocker men's and women's basketball teams. The pep rally is from 7 to 8 p.m. Friday at WSU's Brayburn Square and is presented by the Wichita State University Alumni Association. The event includes appearances by the men's and women's basketball teams, as well as head coaches Greg Marshall and Keitha Adams. The Shocker Spirit Squad and Shocker Sound will perform also. And now I'd like to introduce our featured speaker, Andrew Hipsley, Dean of the Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Thank you. What do we do at Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences? We educate. That may seem an obvious answer, but let me add, we educate in the original sense of the word, educary. It's Latin for lead out or bring out. We help bring out from our students new insights that they didn't know they could have, a new way of thinking, the ability to solve a problem, an ability that they did not know they had and importantly, the student's own creative nature. Not only do poets have to be creative to succeed, but so do chemists and physicists and biologists and philosophers and political scientists and anthropologists. To do this kind of education, we cannot only target the intellect, though that is important. When we educate, we need to educate the whole, the whole person. And a ma major part of that, of course, comes from a liberal arts education. Educating the whole requires us to go beyond the classroom. And I want to talk about two ways in which we go beyond the classroom to educate the whole. Our idea is to develop our students to be contributors to the workforce in a meaningful way. And to develop our students to become global citizenship, citizens. Part of our responsibility is to prepare students for the workforce, to give them some kind of experience, direct experience when they're here. And for that, we need to develop a whole array of internship opportunities. And internships themselves, they are leading out, they are bringing out from the students the soft skills that they learn, the power skills that they learn from liberal arts education to be applied in the workforce. Well, some of our degree programs are very well positioned already. Political science, communications, criminal justice, social work, they have very, very rigorous and robust internship programs. But we want to provide opportunities of internships for all our students. Some of the real challenges are, how do we give an internship to an historian, anthropologist, a philosopher. What we want to do is we want to create a special kind of internship syllabus. It's a generic syllabus whose main goal, whose main student learning outcome is to force the students to reflect on how those soft skills of a liberal arts education such as communication and teamwork can be applied in the workforce so they understand the connection between what they're gaining from their degree and how they can be successful in the workforce. An historian comes here to study history because she loves history. She had a wonderful experience at high school. We want her to love history in liberal arts and sciences, but also spend some time 
perhaps in a bank, perhaps in a software company, where she can realize that the very skills that make her so successful in a historian can be used in another domain. She is more than just an historian. So what are these skills? These are the very skills, or soft skills, power skills, if you like, that industry is crying out for. Knowing how to communicate, how to speak well. Knowing not just how to solve a problem, but how do you state a problem? How do you define a problem? Making decisions based on a whole array of data, muddled data, different people's ideas, but still synthesizing it and finding your decision. Being able to work in a team, to be able to collaborate, to realize that it's not just your idea, it's all the ideas in the room that need to be taken account of. Knowing how to not just think logically, but to be a critique of other people's thinking and find logical deficits. So what does this internship syllabus look like? Well, the first thing, it's a joint effort. It's an effort between the student, the faculty member, and the person in the company. The idea is to reiterate those soft skills, and then with the student's help and the direction of the supervisor and the faculty, show carefully how those soft skills apply to that particular domain. This could be, for example, an internship in an accountancy firm who are just rolling out a piece of accountancy software. History student, philosophy student, they would be level one user support. They have to use the soft skills of communication with the people who, tell, who phone them to ask them for the problems. They have to work with their IT team as a, as a, a team. Um, and they have to learn to solve difficult problems. Most importantly, the historian and philosophy will have brought out from them the idea that their soft skills can be used in a meaningful way in the workforce. Importantly is that this internship is student-centered. The student is the co-author of the syllabus, along with the faculty and the person in industry. To do this, we're talk having lots of conversations, and I'm very, very happy that I have a excellent, stunning group of students on my advisory council who are all excited about the idea and giving us all sorts of pause for thought, and we're working this through. How can we make it available to all? The second way of educating the whole is all about creating global citizens, bringing out from students an appreciation of different perspectives. A liberal arts education helps us to see both the world as it is and as the world as it should be. More than ever, there is a need for higher education to develop global citizens, full members of society who are open to differences, who can discern the familiar and welcome those who are not like themselves. As an undergraduate myself, I spent a few weeks one summer in Moscow. The sights, the smells, the tastes, the way people dressed, were completely foreign to me, and I remember feeling utterly disoriented and uncomfortable. Yet I look back now and I realize that this was the beginning of a lifelong appreciation of Russia and its people and their stories. That short trip, trip gave me a hunger to return, and I went back for a semester a few years later and many times subsequently. Those few weeks were an integral part of my education. We talk a lot about Wichita State, about equality of access to higher education. My belief is that the access must be to education of the whole, which is the power of the liberal arts. Part of the power is to discomfort, to disorient, to force us to engage in what is outside and beyond ourselves, thereby finding a new appreciation from what is different from ourselves. A study abroad experience sets students on a collision path to this dynamic. And as such, study abroad mitigates against bias and tribalism and begins the slow and important work of creating a global citizenry. As well as strong writers, clear thinkers, and powerful analyzers, global citizens are recognized as great assets in the workforce. In the Fairmont College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our goal is to provide a study abroad opportunity for every student, 
including first-generation underserved students, who we know are most impacted by such an experience. Now, we know also that many will be unable to take a full semester away. Working part-time, they cannot afford the loss of earnings. However, what WSU does provide for shorter periods abroad in the form of four-credit travel seminars. These last for around two weeks and are led by faculty who are themselves from the destination country or who have a special connection to it. And what you see right now is something that Carolyn Shaw from Political Science put on a few years ago. We in Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences have many faculty who fit into these two categories. These experiences are transformational and often lead students to go back for longer periods, sometimes again and again and again. One of our priorities is to make a travel seminar possible for the students in the Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences who need it most. When all is said and done, and we are doing an awful lot, educating the whole is what Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is here for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean Hipsley. At this time, I will take any questions that the audience has on the university update you heard earlier. Seeing none, we always like to close by reminding uh, all of you the mission and vision of Wichita State University, and that is to be internationally recognized as the model for applied learning and research, and to be an essential educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. Thank you for coming today. The next briefing will be held at 10 a.m. October 31st.